So let's start to look at our discrete random variables. And then in later videos, we'll look at continuous random variables. And as we look at our discrete random variables, we want to create a probability distribution. Well, if we are looking at discrete random variables, then we're creating what is called a probability mass function. So on the graph on the right, what you see is the probability mass function for a Poisson distribution, which uh, we'll get to in a later video. If we have a continuous random variable, then we typically call it a probability density function. Because remember with continuous, we look at intervals or ranges of possible values of our variable. Whereas with the discrete, we are looking at the probability of a certain outcome when it comes to our discrete random variable. So let's take a look at how we analyze discrete random variables. So how do we handle probabilities for discrete random variables? Well, X is going to be our random variable and K is going to be the specified number the discrete random variable could assume. So the probability that our random variable equals K is written as P for probability and then in parentheses that X equals K. So what is the probability that X equals K? So for example, if we're looking at our three coins that we tossed, and we want to know what is the probability that we get two heads, we would write that as the probability that X is equal to two. Okay. So we could solve for that using the information from our previous video, because we had found that the probability of getting zero heads, remember we tossed the coin eight different rounds, each round we tossed the coin three times, and in our eight rounds, we found that one time we got zero heads, three times we got one head, three times we got two heads, one time we got three heads. So the probability that X is equal to two is going to be that 0.375. Okay. We can also find the probability that X is less than two, in which case we're looking at outcomes zero and one. And so that probability would be 0.125 plus 0.375. Seven, five. We could find the probability that X is less than or equal to two, in which case we would also include this one here. So we would have 0.125 plus 0.375 plus 0.375. Alternatively, because this is collectively exhaustive, because we know it totals up to be one, we could also find this one by doing one minus, and if X has to be less than or equal to two, then the only outcome it can't be is three. So we could do one minus 0.125 to find that probability. Um, writing below what you can see. <laughs> so you can find it this way by adding all three of these together or by taking one minus the one option that it can't be. So we find our probability distribution here for our discrete random variable. And then from there, we can find the probability of a specific event occurring. We can also find the probability, so we can look at relative, uh, just like we did with the, if I go back, remember with the relative frequency distributions, right? You could turn this into percentages and cumulative and we could figure out how many fall in there. Um, similarly here, somewhere. Uh, we can find how many fall into multiple categories here by adding up those probabilities. Okay. To show the probability mass function for a discrete random variable, we could show that as a histogram here. The number of heads being zero, here's that 0.125. The number of heads being one, here we have our 0.375. So in this case here, because it is numbers, it is quantitative. So if we go back to our previous videos, remember that with qualitative, we were doing bar graphs and pie charts, how many people fell into categories. With quantitative, where we have numbers, we would create a histogram. And so we have numbers here. Um, this is the number of heads. This is the information we're collecting here, numbers, quantitative. A number of heads and then what we're doing is turning it into that probability distribution by looking at the probability of those outcomes 
and representing them here. So instead of like we had with our previous, sorry, mind the scroll. Instead of having it be frequency and number of counts on the histogram here, what we have here is a probability. Okay, so it looks like the histogram we saw before, but it's a probability instead of a count. We could have a formula for our probability mass function. And in this case, the way that it would look is that it would say that our function, so f is a function of x, so the results are going to depend on what x is, and x is going to be our different outcomes. Our different outcomes were heads equal 0, heads equal 1, heads equal 2, heads equals 3. So if x is equal to 0, the probability was 0.12. If the x was equal to 1 or 2, then we were 0.375. I think that's a typo there. It should be 0.125, yeah. <laughs> this should be a 5. There we go. So in this case, you can see that the value in the formula depends on what x is, and x has four options in this particular case. But this is what a probability mass function would look like. Okay. When it comes to that probability mass function, it's got three characteristics. Your function's got to have probabilities between 0 and 1, right? You can have 0 probability of an outcome, 100% probability of an outcome, but you can't have more than 100% probability of an outcome. And your function can equal 0 for all x not in your in s, okay? So anything that is not in that sample space uh, will have a value of x. So when we toss the coin, we toss the coin three times, which means that x could equal zero heads, one head, two heads, three heads. So our sample space is zero heads, one head, two heads, and three heads, right? And so anything that is not in that sample space, so the probability of getting four heads, what is the probability of getting four heads? Well, if I toss the coin only three times, the probability of getting four heads is zero. So any outcomes, any events not in the sample space have to have a probability of zero, okay? Now, anything in the sample space could have a probability of zero, okay? Or up to and including one, right? Something in between. But if it's not in the sample space, its probability is zero. So you can't have five heads if you only toss the coin three times. So what this is saying here is that that probability equals zero for all values of x, all numbers of heads that are not in the sample space, right? It's not possible to have five heads, so the probability should be zero. Now, the sum of all the probabilities within the sample space will equal one. That's that collectively exhaustive. We've covered all the options. So 100% of the outcomes have to fall into that sample space. Sample space being we toss the coin three times. So it's either zero heads, one head, two heads, or three heads. Okay. All right. Let's suppose we have a scenario here uh, where we're going to roll two die. They are six-sided. And so here we have our different possible outcomes. If we have two dice, then when we add them together, right, we can't get one. So one is not in the sample space. So the probability of rolling two and getting adding them up to get one is going to be zero. And that would be this characteristic right here. Okay. All right. So we roll the dice and the question is, what do we get? Okay. So try rolling the dice and see what happens. So try rolling some dice and see what happens. There are also some virtual dice you can roll on the internet. So let's do that. All right. So we're going to do this experiment 10 times and our roller makes some stupid noises. So bear with me here. All right. Okay. So two dice, six sided. We're going to roll the dice. <laughs> And we get nine. So let's just write these down somewhere. Here we go. Okay, what are outcomes? We got um, total of nine. Okay. Roll again. 10. 
again, 11, 5, so we have 10, 11, 5, okay, let's roll again, 5, 12, 7, Okay, so what do we got? Six rolls here. Let's do three more. Seven. All right, do it again. Eleven. And four. What is that? Four, eight, there's 10 rolls. Okay, so let's look at our experiment. All right, how many times did we get two we did not get any twos how many times did we get three none we got one four we got one five did we get any sixes no sixes we got two sevens and no eights and then one nine one ten two elevens and one twelve well we know the probability that x is equal to k so we need to divide these numbers by ten if we did 10 rolls. Okay. All right, so from there, first let's check, okay, are all the probabilities between zero and one? Yes, we have lots of zeros here because we didn't roll a number of combinations. For all of the x's that are not in the sample space, not between 2 and 12, things that are more than 12, things that are less than 2, their probability should be 0. So yes, we did not roll any times where we got 1 or 13. Okay, And then if we add up all the probabilities, we should get 1. So here we have 0.1 plus 0.1, so that's 0.2 plus 0.2. So now we're at 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6. Seven, eight, nine. Did I get them all? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, so what's wrong in my scenario here? Four, eight, nine, ten. One, four, one, five, two sevens. No eights. A nine, a ten. Two 11s and a 12. So that should equal to 10. Why does that not equal to 10? 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. What am I missing here? 9, 10, 11, 5. Oh, I should have two fives. There we go. So in this case, I was missing the fact we had two fives. Now they equal to 100%. Okay, so we've checked that. Next thing we want to do is we want to create our probability histogram from the sum of the die. So we can decide how this distribution goes here. Um, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.3. And so we would then look at 0, 0, 4 occurred one time, and 5 occurred two times. <laughs> six occurred zero times seven occurred two times eight occurred zero times nine and ten are both one eleven was twice and twelve was once so here is our probability mass function uh, as a histogram okay now, the other thing to consider is a cumulative distribution function. A cumulative distribution function looks at the probability of everything below it. So it is looking at the probability of a value and everything less than that value. And so you get that by adding up your different uh, probabilities. So if we're looking at the tossing so if we go back, remember we looked at heads. We had zero heads, one head, two head, three heads. And the probabilities we had, 
0.375, 0 0.375, and 0.125. So a cumulative distribution function would say, okay, the probability of getting less than a zero, well, it's not in the sample space, so it's gonna be zero. The probability of getting a number that is less than one gives only this option of zero. This should be, oops, making marks here. This should be our 0.125, okay? The probability of getting less than two is going to be these two probabilities added together. So 0.375 plus 0.125 should give us that 0.5, okay? And then what is the probability that we are less than three? That's gonna be our 0.375 plus 0.375 plus 0.125, which is 0.875. And then if we look at what's the probability that we're less than or equal to three, well, that's every option. So that is going to be equal to one. So we're looking at what is the probability that we are less than uh, these different combinations here. When you plot a cumulative distribution function, a CDF, it is going to look like this for a discrete distribution. So here we are at zero. Then if we are looking at the probability that we're less than one, that only included that zero, okay, all the way up to not including the one. And then if we're looking at the probability that we're less than two, that would be the one here. So you get this step looking function for a cumulative distribution function, okay? When it comes to a cumulative distribution function, the probabilities have to be between zero and one. So when you add up, if we go back, all the different possible combinations, the highest you ever get to is one, okay? The limit as x approaches negative infinity is going to be zero. The limit as x approaches positive infinity is going to be one. In other words, you start down here, you get up to 100%, you can't go beyond 100%, and you can't go below 0%. The idea with the continue with the sorry, the cumulative distribution function is it is right continuous, okay? So when we have this particular graph here, we only had a couple different options, right? We had that the coin could be zero, one, two, or three. And so what this is showing us here is this is the probability that we're less than one. This is the probability we're less than two. This is the probability we're less than three. And then greater than three here. So by continuous, it keeps going through here, all these different ranges, even though we know that it's discrete and that you can't have multiple different outcomes. But because you are adding up all the previous, then um, that gives us this shape that we see here. So let's find the cumulative distribution function for our dice roll. This will be a little hard because I got to toggle back and forth. But let's start and look at, okay, well, what is the probability that we are less than or equal to K? So what is the probability that you are less than or equal to two? Well, that's all the zeros that are out here plus this zero and we get zero. The probability that x is less than or equal to three, well, we add to that this here and we get zero. So then we go, what's the probability that we are less than or equal to four? We add this zero plus this zero plus this one out of 10, so that's our point one. What's the probability we're less than or equal to five? Two plus one plus all those zeros, we get three tenths, which is 0.3. What's the probability that X is less than or equal to K, where K equals six? Six plus 
six is zero plus the two plus the one plus the zero plus the zero so we're still at three and seven is two so we would add the two plus all the previous okay and we go to eight eight is zero plus the two plus the two plus the one so eight is still sitting at 0. 0.5 and then nine is going to add one to it 10 is going to add one to it 11 is going to add two to it and 12 is going to add one more so here notice let's go back to, it's got to be between zero and one so our cumulative distribution function all those numbers are between zero and one the limits start at zero end at one here we go start at zero end at one so we have those two extremes okay and if a is less than b then the cumulative distribution functions have to be less so what does that mean that means that if we're looking at the probability that x is less than or equal to be four and four is less than five then the probability that x is less than or equal to be five has to be bigger than the probability that x is less than or equal to be four so if k is less so four is less than five then the cumulative distribution has to be less because it increases it keeps going up it goes from zero to a hundred percent that's what this is telling you here is that if your k is less then that cumulative distribution is less because you haven't accumulated as much at those lower numbers because it's everything below it okay so the, these numbers have to be either staying the same or going up as you are moving upwards okay and then our cumulative distribution function is right continuous so once we hit here it's just staying at a hundred percent right we can see in this graph it just keeps going okay all right so plot this cumulative distribution function for our two die example so what we're going to do is put a line at two and three and i'm just gonna oh man let's leave it that way okay at four we're at point one at five we're at point three and at six we're at point three at seven we're at point five at eight we're at point five at nine we're at point six kind of getting lazy here and figuring out where these spots are 10 is point seven then we're at point nine and then we're at 10. So a cumulative distribution function for rolling our two die would look something like this. It's discrete, right? Other cumulative distribution functions will have a curve. It'll all be connected, but with discrete, they are these uh, lines here. Um, and you can see for some of the outcomes, the cumulative distribution doesn't change. And it's always going to start at zero and end at one and then it is going to be right continuous, so it's just going to keep going as a flat line there.